19 Miles to Music Row is a songwriter's night held the first Tuesday night of each month as a community outreach of Franklin First United Methodist Church. Our evening consists of, for the first hour, four up-and-coming songwriters sharing three songs each in a round, performing in front of three to 600 people. These writers are scheduled from submissions to our 19 Miles website, and everyone can submit. The next hour is our featured guest, a professional writer who has had songs recorded by major artists. Please give a warm welcome to Gordon Kennedy, Jonathan Jackson, and E Nation, to Johnny Bulford. Johnny? Kathy Lee Gifford, enjoy yourself. We're glad you're here. Thank you very, very much. Hi, everybody. God bless you all. One of our goals at 19 Miles was to allow up-and-coming writers the opportunity to share a stage with someone who is a master at their craft. This is a fun evening of songs, laughs, merchandise, food, and the opportunity to mingle with amazingly talented people. The best part of all, it is free, and everyone is welcome. Welcome to 19 Miles. This is the new anniversary, safer at home version of our 19 Miles Writers event that we have every month. And we're bringing you the highlights of the last year of our main performers at each one of these. And let me tell you just a quick bit about 19 Miles. Over a year ago, I had an idea to do a writer's night at church. And the first person I talked to about bringing this to fruition was the person who came up with the name, 19 Miles, who's sitting beside me, Jody. Thank you. You're welcome. And nice the next, to be here. The next person we went to was Cortland and said, hey, do you think we can put all this together? And it became the reality that we're going to bring you highlights of tonight. So 19 Miles to Music Row, I don't know if you know, but we're sitting here, where that name came from, we're sitting here at the main campus uh, at Franklin First, uh, wait, it's social we distancing. That? Here we go. We are officially, Ten oh man, feet. yeah, <laughs> over six feet. Wait, Cortland, here, take, there, one more time. Oh, we got to be more than six oh, feet. Oh, dude, we are eight feet, eight inches. We're so good. we want no emails. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is our first anniversary Safer at Home edition, which we had a lot of fun with, and we knew we wanted to bring something for that first anniversary that uh, was a celebration and a reliving of all the moments that had brought us to this position. So right now we're sitting, so we can tell you where 19 Miles Music Row came from. We're sitting here at the main campus, right on the corner of Mac Hatcher and Franklin Road in uh, Franklin, Tennessee. And this location just happens to be, you know, we're trying to think of a name that meant something. And so this location, actually, if you Google it, is 19.2 miles from wherever Google says is Music Row. And so we were like, But 19.2 is just too verbose. To yeah, you know, we time. didn't want to be, you know, snobbish. <laughs> it doesn't fit on things like a patch or a hat or a shirt. We don't want to be <laughs> snobbish about anything. We're like, ah, oh, we'll just round it down to 19 miles. But anyway, so if you all wondering where that came from, uh, that's where the name came from. 19 miles of Music Row. And that's, that's a place that when you're in Nashville, Everybody wants to be on Music Row. Well, and so. there's also history with this building literally under Bill's feet right now. Yeah. And this uh, mock-up of the circle that's on the Ryman stage. Yeah. Because of our ties as a church to the Ryman Tabernacle, <clears throat> we oh, thought this was a great place to, to <laughs> launch this from. So anyway. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, so I do remember that conversation, you know, in my office upstairs in this, yep. and you were like, what if we did something Let's like that? This. And immediately we rounded the corner and went, knocked on Cortland's door and we went, Cortland, we have this great idea. And from there we have done, well, we intended to do 12 really great shows. We did 11, we had 12 planned, but you know, COVID knocked us out, but we did 11. <laughs> unbelievable shows for 19 miles 
And we're so excited to be able to, you know, bring you some of our very favorite moments from all of that uh, as a way to uh, do a safer at home edition, social distancing from us. Uh, but still, it's going to be a lot of fun. So I hope you all enjoy it. I would like to do a shout out to other members of the committee, oh, yeah. too, because from here, <clears throat> people started saying, hey, Dan Keene's in the audience every, you know, every Sunday. I mean, this guy worked, you know, ran ASCAP for a while. And Rusty Harmon used oh, to manage Hootie and the Blowfish and has done all this amazing stuff, too. Let's see. Let's pull all these people in and put a committee together to help us put yeah. these events together. And Denny Rudolph, who is quite literally possibly the best backdoor stage man that you can get for welcoming people when they show up. Who also had experience with songwriters nights. Yeah. So yeah. all that conglomeration oh of folks yeah. really kind of set us up for a win. Yeah. yeah. And, and so, it has been a win win. To the fantastic. point that we could say this is the biggest songwriters event that we know of, period. Yeah. Now to the point that we're bringing in international people along with our Nashville and countrywide writers. Yeah. One of our moments that we want to relive uh, takes us all the way back to the very beginning, uh, to quite possibly, which is one of the best storytelling songwriters that I have ever experienced so far. Deaton? When I was a young engineer many years ago, I met a very young songwriter who was one of the kindest, most poetic, witty, and smart guys that I have met. And I fell in love with his voice immediately. And later on, kept falling in love with the songs that he did until finally, Lady Adam Bellum cuts, I guess, one of his biggest songs. I run to you. The act of creation is violent. The act of writing a song is violent. You wouldn't think so. But the noise and the chaos fight tooth and nail to keep from being mastered by the structure, the art, and the beauty. I was going to run in the Nashville Marathon. That's 26.2 miserable miles. As I was running in the race, my two best friends that I'd started with, they abandoned me quickly, and I was left in the desolate part of the race, the uh, Metroplex. It's office buildings, and it's hot. And then I saw him, or at least the back of him. His t-shirt said, I run this town. And by this point, I was delirious, and I thought, what does that mean, I run this town? I run this town like a mafia boss. I run this town like a mayor. I run it like a runner from point A to point B. I developed an intense hatred for the man and never had the chance to meet him. Monday morning, the Fresh Face Trio, the next big thing shows up, and the next big thing is kind of a big thing because the publisher had set it up, and you want to be a part of whatever the next big thing is. I didn't want to blow it, but I had absolutely no idea. I had a real panic attack. So they came in with fresh face eyes and they said, what do you got for us? I sat down at my piano and I went, I run from hate and I run from prejudice. And I thought to myself, I have no idea what these words mean. And I wrote the words. And I opened up my eyes, I expected to see them in shock, packing up their backpacks, slowly walking backwards out of my studio. They said with a transcendent smile, that is brilliant. And I said, I've been saving that for you for a couple of months. And that's the first time I met Lady Annabellum. And I run from hate And I run from prejudice And I run from pessimist But I run too late And I run my life Or is it running me? I run from my past and I run too fast, or too slow it seems. Your lies become the truth. That's when I run to you. This world keeps. 
keep spinning faster into a new disaster so I run to you baby when it all starts coming undone you're the only one I run to I run Traffic crawls, cell phone calls, talk radio screams at me through my tinted window. I see a little girl, rust red minivan. She's got chocolate on her face. She's got little hands and she waves at me yeah she smiles at me well hello world how you been good to see you my old friend sometimes I feel Broken like I'm never gonna heal again And I see a light, see a little faith And a little girl And I run to you Thank you. So that first night with Tom was a little bit, I've never been as nervous as I was that night. Because there were all kinds of things to fit in place, and were we doing it right? Was it wrong? Then Tom was on the piano, which, you know, this stage has changed a lot when, from once we started to then. But, you know, we had the f four stools, and we had to go to piano, and Bill is always in the booth, and there were set changes, but it was, it was so exciting. It was that excitingness, but nervousness, and I don't think we could have had a better first show. Yeah. And Tom, Tom, Tom was did so gracious. such a good job yeah. just being, I mean, he was as cool as a cucumber the whole time. So this next artist... Um, that I'm, that I'm going to introduce has this wonderful, beautiful personal connection. Uh, I, I happen to know his mom, and she is a part of our choir here. And so, um, you know, Sherry is someone that um, I have known for the past two or three years. Uh, and it's interesting when you know people for a long time before you know who they are or who they have in their family, you just know the people who are a part of your circles, a part mm -hmm. of your friend circles. And so... I'll never forget, you know, she's she's talking about stuff, and she was like, oh, yeah, my son sings. <laughs> my son sings. My son does music. Oh, yeah, he does music. And, and, and if you live in Nashville, you know that Everybody. there are a lot of people who do music. <laughs> and, so, right. and so we got to talking about it a little bit and different things. And then this 19, and that's before we even knew 19 Miles was coming, and this 19 Miles things came up. And she's like, oh, yeah, he's written some songs before. And I'm like, oh, you know, and at this point, I didn't even know his first name. <laughs> and and so and so we're talking through all this stuff and she was like, Oh yeah, he's written some songs for Garth. <laughs> I'm like, Oh, Garth, I do know that first name. And I remember Sherry sitting right over there in the front row of our audience and the pride Beaming. and the pride that she had for her son and if for no other reason, Kyle Jacobs, you've created a memory. Take it away. I'm very thankful for Garth. I wrote this with Lee Bryce and the incredible, indomitable uh, Billy Montana, who wrote Suds in the Bucket and Bring on the Rain. And, and actually, I'm not even sure if I'm actually a true writer on the song. I think I just spell-checked and got the coffee.
But anyway, my name's on it, so that helped out. Anyway, this song absolutely changed my life. This chair is all screwed up. People say she's only in my head. It's going to take time, but I forget. They say I need to get on with my life. What they don't realize is when you're dying, six numbers just to hang up the phone. Driving across town just to see if she's home. Waking a friend in the dead of the night Just to hear him say it'll be alright You find the things you do to not fall asleep So you know she'll be there in your dreams That's when she's more than a memory Took a man Everything she ever wrote Watched all her words go up in smoke To all her pictures off the wall That ain't helping me at all Cause when you're talking that loud Nothing but air, you look like hell You just don't care, you're drinking more than you ever drank And sinking down lower than you ever sank You find yourself falling down on your knees Shaking your fist, begging please That's where she Six numbers just to hang up the phone Driving across town just to see if she's home You're waking a friend in the dead of night Just to hear him say it'll be alright You find yourself falling down on your knees Shaking your fists, begging please That's where she's more than a man Y'all, thank you so very much. Thank you. I met Gordon Kennedy back in the 80s <clears throat> when he had to be the guitar player with the biggest smile I had ever seen and the greatest personality and great stories. And he was a hotshot, cocky, great guitar player and evolved into such an amazing writer that had so many songs that could probably change your world. Yeah, maybe change your world. <laughs> and, and you know, oddly enough, one of them we, did. One of them did, and it, and, and it led to such a huge hit for Eric Clapton, led to such a great Grammy speech. Uh, I think for you know, people across America, but in his hometown, anyone that knew him was standing on their feet going, thank you, Gordon, for saying those words to the world. And uh, we so appreciated that. And albeit for a, but for a technical glitch, we could have shared that moment with you. <laughs> that changed the world <laughs> moment. But unfortunately, we'll share another moment with you. It's <laughs> equally as fun. But Imagine you're a songwriter and you're in an important meeting and you might not know how this is going to go, but instead of writing the next worldwide hit, you're going to write a theme song for Fox and the Hound. Part two. Part, Part two. two. 
<laughs> which, which every parent and every child loves, of course. How much better could that be? Okay, but those are still change the world moments because, I mean, I have, well, I have grown daughters now, so we won't talk about that. But um, literally we have watched every animated movie uh, that probably ever was created. And it was fun for me to listen to him say, oh, I wrote a song for Fox and the Hound too. And I'm thinking, which song was it? Because I have them all memorized from all of the video. <laughs> wa- and, and we're not talking DVD. We're talking videotape VHS. watching, VHS watching. Super VHS? Uh, and so, you know, so what I think is interesting is your change of world moment still occurs. It's just in a different song. What changed our world to having, and we were thrilled. Gordon, you're such a great guy. And uh, we're so happy to listen to you again. So I was downtown within, you know, 20 minutes or something. I walked into this conference room and, and they had the storyboard set up all over the room for what would be the film known as The Fox and the Hound 2 that was released in 2006, December of six. So. It was four years from the time I met with them that the movie finally came out. It would be the last movie they would use hand-drawn art for. And then from then on and up till now, it's all computer-generated stuff. So would you write a song for, and they showed us this scene, uh, this, this, this scene on the storyboard where Todd and Copper are chasing each other, you know, over the fences and through the creeks and all that stuff. Would you write a song for, and they were telling me at the time that, you know, people like Reba McIntyre and Trisha Yearwood and maybe, I think it was Little Big Town, were some of the artists that were going to be contributing their voices to the soundtrack. So they had asked to see three writers, three writers, and it was Will Robinson, not the danger, danger Will Robinson guy, but, and then Marcus Humman, and then they wanted to meet with the Rascal Flats guys, and those guys didn't show up for the meeting. In fact, the Disney people called their manager saying, where are the, you know, aren't they aren't supposed to be? And I said, they couldn't believe that these guys would not show up for the meeting. And in fact, the manager at some point said, what about no, don't you understand, you know? So that's the reason why they called me, you know, Rascal Flats didn't show up. So anyway, so I, I went home with my assignment to write this chase scene, you know, song up tempo and they said, just write a verse and a chorus, send it to us, and if we like it, we'll green light you to finish the song and send the, the rest of the song. I wanna see if we like it first. And so while I'm working on this other idea, there was this piece of music that a friend of mine named Blair Masters, who's a keyboard player, had just played in the studio, and I don't know uh, what possessed him to do this, but he played this chord progression. That note right there was different enough because what I was hearing when he started was Roger Miller. Engine, engine, number nine. Goes back to that, but Blair went here. And I went, let me record that. So as a songwriter, you take these nuggets of ideas and things and you always just have this stockpile of little riffs and chord changes, melodies, singing into your phone writing down on a napkin or typing into your computer phrases and stuff. So when you purpose to write, you go to that reserve and see what's there. But as soon as he had played that, I I said, let's work on this. We fleshed out this piece of music. When we are together, I know that forever I'll always my days follow you into the blue beyond. Tinkerbell. Dream with one another, help each other over the rainbow. You know I'll follow you into the blue beyond. I never want to be anywhere I cannot see the love light. You shine. I only want to be wherever. Never will be lonely. You need only look right behind you to find who will follow you into the blue beyond. Ooh, do, do. I'll 
follow you into the blue beyond. I never want to be anywhere I cannot see. So I grew up on country back roads, like single lane country back roads. If you had two cars coming, somebody's going to have to move to the ditch or stop. That's the roads I grew up on. So our next Inside the Hits person completely brought me back to the very best of what I always remembered growing up with those. And we say it tongue in cheek, but I really did grow up a redneck. And so uh, this next artist brought us back, brought me back to that place. And quite possibly, it made me kind of wonder, you know, if we were a songwriter's night or if we were a comedy night, because he was so funny and told such funny jokes to keep us all uh, connected in those moments. But he, he was literally one of my favorites that we had. Well, and when he came, when he showed up, I thought he was the marble man. Like, when he walked in the door, you just, that is the exact picture I remember as a little boy looking at a magazine right. and seeing like a marble ad and he was the cowboy. So he wrote a song that he purposely sat down to make not political, but patriotic. And then when it was recorded by Daryl Worley, it was, uh, it was an anthem immediately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you did a fantastic job on this, but you really blessed us by telling the story behind the song, which is why 19 Miles exists. So hit makers like you can tell us what you went through to create such an amazing song. You got any veterans in the house tonight? Please raise your hand and stand up. Thank y'all so much for your service. Or any policemen or first responders, thank y'all so much. <clears throat> um, me and Daryl got together one morning. He had just come back from a USO tour over there in the Middle East, and <clears throat> we were talking about the people, uh, it was about a year after 9-11, and we were talking about the people protesting the war in Afghanistan, and we just got mad and wrote this song. And Daryl had the guts to get do it on the Opry that next weekend. Uh, even though his manager told him not to, he said it was too political. And um, I'm just glad he, you know, didn't listen to it. He played the song for his dad, and his dad said, you dang right you're going to play that on the Opry, son. People need to hear that. So thank you, Mr. Worley. Hear people say we don't need this war, but I say there's something worth fighting for. What about our freedom and this piece of ground? We didn't get to keep them by backing down. They say we don't realize the mess we're getting in. Before you start your preaching, well, let me ask you this, my friend. Have you forgotten how it felt that day to see your homeland under fire and her people blown away? Have you forgotten when those towers fell? We had neighbors still inside. We're going through a living hell And you say we shouldn't worry about Bin Laden Have you forgotten? Yeah. 
They took all the footage off of my TV They say it's too disturbing for you and me It'll just breed anger It's what the experts say If it was up to me I'd show it every day some say this country's just out looking for a fight Well, after 9-11, I'd have to say that's right Have you forgotten how it felt that day To see your homeland under fire And her people blown away Have you forgotten when those towers fell we had neighbors still inside Going through a living hell We're about to get the ones behind Bin Laden Have you forgotten? I've been there with the soldiers Who've gone away to war You can bet that they remember what they're fighting for Have you forgotten All the people killed Yes, yeah, some went down like heroes In that Pennsylvania field Have you forgotten About our Pentagon All the loved ones that we lost And those left to carry on but now we don't have to worry about Bin Laden Navy SEALs got that guy Have you forgotten? Have you forgotten? Have you forgotten? Thank y'all so much. Appreciate it. Wynn is one of the funniest guys I have ever heard. And one of the driest with that, which I absolutely love. I mean, the guy's a scream. Really honored that he came. <laughs> yeah, when, and there was another person who came that... I had a bias against, and I wasn't so sure he was the person that should be here. But he did something that blew me away, and it was in the stories he told, he did a better, uh, he spoke more clearly about forgiveness than I had ever heard anybody do before. And look, I've been around church for a long time, and I've heard some great sermons on forgiveness. His story on forgiveness hmm. put it over the top for me. He was amazing. And you know, I've, I've been around him for many years, worked with him professionally, and, and even at that point, that is one of the highlights of you know, someone's story that I have ever heard and made a huge impact on me as well. And he will make a huge impact pretty much on anyone he comes in contact with, which is why when he has been, you know, hosting, gosh, Grand Ole Opry, you know, country music, uh, mountain music, whatever. I mean, it's like he was, you know, he was worldwide. It was so easy for him to step into those roles because he is never <clears throat> failing for the right words to say. He truly is one of the quick wittedest individuals I have ever run into in my life, and one of the funniest, and one of the guys that loves God dearly. Mm -hmm. Think the world of him. Anyway, we were thrilled to have him come in. There was a lot going on in his life at that time, uh, and to see him live through that into even the songs he played that night mm. is just amazing. Mr. Gary Chapman. I wrote this from a male perspective, and nobody ever heard a guy sing it. When it was cut, it was not changed. 
the first line says, I may not be every mother's dream for her little girl. I meant, I may not be the perfect son-in-law. So when I sing it, I just want you to know how that worked so that you don't look at me going, really? <laughs> I sang this song the first time in easily 30 years. Uh, a week ago, Saturday, I did a, I did a thing in, in Los Angeles for a group of people not unlike you. Very smart, very receptive, attentive. Thank you, by the way. It really means a lot. They mentioned it. It really means a lot that I look out and I don't see blank stares. I don't see a lot of what the heck is he doing up there. It's really cool, so thank you. But um, I had not sang this song since my dad died. And it's just way different. <laughs> My face may not grace the mind of everyone in the world, but that's all right as long as I can have one wish. I pray when people look inside my life, I want to hear them say. His father's eyes, his father's eyes, eyes that found the good in things, and good was not around, eyes that found the source of hell when hell would not be. Eyes full of compassion See you in every pain Knowing what you're going through And feeling it the same Just like my father Father's eyes, my father's eyes, you know, just like my father's eyes on that day.
what I love best about 19 Miles is we can bring you all the different sides of music. And so, and I think that's what we've seen over the course of this last year is, is just, just about the time we think we know and we have this model down, man, someone comes in and turns <laughs> it on its head. And so the next artist that I'm going to introduce, uh, there, are, there are very few people that I can honestly say I would love to get in trouble with. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, you know, this is one of those people that I can say I would love to get in some trouble with this person. And, you know, and we could make it look good at the same time. So um, this month, the, the artist that we have came uh, turned this place on its head into a full-on honky-tonk. I'm telling you, she had this audience singing some low-brow country song <laughs> about seeing a yeehaw, and you know what that means. All, all of the people in here, she had them all singing. And it and was... Sang. And it was so much fun, and wow, what a moment to have her, um, Bridget Tatum. Thank y'all for letting me be a part of this. If it weren't for this song, I wouldn't be sitting here. Thank y'all for letting me sing. I could see her yeehaw in your church. That was strange, but I will recover from it. Y'all have been awesome. Thank you, Franklin, Tennessee. Thank you, Rusty Bill. Anybody else that puts this together, it's a lot of work. A fella Danny Myrick wrote this song with me and a fella named Jason Aldean cut this song and it went number one for two weeks. And I was grateful because all I wanted to do was rhyme kakalaki because I'm from South Carolina. So if you know it, sing it with me. It's called She's Country. Go like this. Done jack it up. She can sound cackle like you can shake a sass and fresh it, man. Man, my jam up from down in Alabama. She's a raging, raging. Little tip from Brownswick. Do she go to beach with a thick southern drone? Sexy swinging wall. Brother, she's on the country. Shoot from a cowboy boots to a nail home root. She's country. They came to see when I wrote this song because girls aren't supposed to be able to write songs like this, but we know who the, uh, the guy is that says we can do whatever we want to. So all of you girls, if you write songs, you do just do whatever you want to do. Just do your thing. Don't worry about what they say. I didn't worry about what they said, but they did come check see if I had teeth after I did it. And then I was like, nope, they're all there. They're like, a girl wrote on this song? Yeah, and they're all there. And then it pays for my dentist too, so see how that worked out? <laughs>
again She's country shoot From a cowboy boots to a down home bruise Nothing but country From the back wood, she's a hog on down to the bone, she's country. Thank you so much again. Thank y'all so much. God bless you. The great thing about Bridget, it was so hilarious. She was afraid we might edit something out that she was going to do, and we don't do that. And one of the great things about a writer's night like this, especially in the kind of place that we're holding it in, is that people have total license to share their talent and their art with a whole bunch of people, and we never say, you can't do that, you can't say this, you can't sing about that. We're gonna enjoy the music with you, celebrate your life. It's been great. Yeah, and the next artist that we're about to share is, um, she's on a level of songwriter that's a little bit different because she is not only a songwriter and a hit maker, but she's a teacher at heart. Mm -hmm. And so she was one of the people who uh, told us a little bit more about how we could support our amateur songwriters. And I remember a conversation back in the green room before she went on about how passionate she is to see music go forth and how much she wants to invest in the next round mm -hmm. of songwriters. I do all of the promotion for 19 Miles. And usually on the promotional posters, there's you know four or five different songs that you put on there. This was the very first time I remember thinking, I do not have enough room on the poster <laughs> to write down all, all the of the really amazing people, not even the hits, yeah. the amazing people that she has written for. You know, they say that when a band has three names, they're a hit band. <laughs> you know, think of all the bands you know that have three names. Yeah. This artist, this songwriter, and I'll say entertainer, she was yeah. by far like a level of entertainer I had not experienced before. As many of our writers are, but this one, Beth Nielsen Chapman, This Kiss. So I wanna play y'all a song to help put my son through college. Yeah, man. I wrote this with Annie Roboff and Robin Lerner. And uh, we were sitting on the beach in Malibu. I was uh, a recent widow. I had lost my husband a couple of years before. To, take, to cancer, and um, my friend Annie, who was having so many hit songs at the time, she was uh, a workaholic, and my friend Robin was going through a really difficult divorce. So between the three of us, we hadn't been kissed in about 900 years. So of course, that's the song we wanted to write, the song about what it feels like to be kissed correctly, which is a thing, as we know, ladies. And uh, <coughs> when I first wrote this song, I had the demo and uh, my son was about 16 or 17. He was listening to Nine Inch Nails and all kinds of crazy metallic stuff. I had the headphones screaming. And I kept playing my little demo over and over in the car on an eight hour car ride down to the beach. And he was about to go crazy because he couldn't, you know, it's like the song is so catchy that he was like, even now at 38, all I have to do is go this. And he goes crazy because it sets off the earworm in his head. But um, he was, really mad at me. He's like, if you play that song one more time, I'm, I'm going to jump out of the car. I was like, this song's going to put you through college, dude. You're just going to have to listen to it a few more times on the way to the beach. So, And it did. So thank you very much, Faith Hill. I don't want 
want another heartbreak I don't need another turn to cry No, I don't want to learn the hard way Baby, hello, oh no, goodbye But you got me like a rocket Shooting straight across the sky It's the way you love me, that's you It's a feeling like this It's centrifugal motion It's perpetual bliss It's that pivotal moment It's ah. Cinderella said to Snow White, how does love get so off course? So all I wanted was a white knight with a good heart, soft touch, fast horse. Buy me off until the sunset, baby, I'm forever yours. It's the way you love me. It's a feeling like this. It's centrifugal motion. It's perpetual bliss. Kiss me in the moonlight On a rooftop under the sky Oh, you can kiss me with the windows open While the rain comes blowing inside Oh, kiss me in sweet slow motion Let's let everything slide You've got me floating You've got me flying It's the way You love me Our next artist we're going to introduce, I'm just going to say, it is our hunk of hunk of burning love, 19 <laughs> miles edition. We had females in the front row who had serious decade-long crushes on this. And next. hours before the show, they were in that front oh, row. Oh, yeah, this was This was when people placed stuff on the seats to hold a seat. <laughs> Didn't we have some camping This out? was the <laughs> second time we had to enact the, the doors will open at 6 o'clock. You have to stay out until then, uh, 19 miles. So I don't think I've met anyone that I've had deeper musical discussions with, theological discussions with, plus all the awkward questions that you want to ask anyone who's been <laughs> acting. You know, things like... What's it really kiss, like? Kissing and bad breath. Uh, <laughs> are, is everyone healthy on the set? I mean... Yeah. All just weird stuff, you know. Who could really answer intelligently about all that? Who writes books on theology, books on poetry, songs that are just like heartfelt, and visits Mount Athos more than once a year and has people praying for me and my family uh, from Mount Athos. I mean, it blows me away. So I was really curious if he would kind of grace our stage and very happy and thrilled to just watch him do his thing a little bit different than some of our other performances because it was really almost just a concert of, uh, of songs and material which uh, I'd had the pleasure of working on for the last four or five years with that guy wondering if anything would ever come out and sure enough he did and what a night we had a packed house yeah, honor to have Jonathan Jackson. This next song uh, is, uh, I've had this around for a long, long time, actually. Um, it's never been released, though. And um, I've been working on some music for the last maybe four years uh, with Bill Deaton. And... Um, it's been such a joy to work on, and I, I think the only reason he, he invited me to play here was uh, so I could actually play some of the music we've recorded together, because I still haven't released it. Um, <laughs> so, um, this is one of the songs that's on that, uh, on that project, but... Um, 
You know, one of the things that um, I, I believe very deeply is that music has the potential to be very healing in people's lives. And um, this song came at a, a midnight hour, I guess, and um, my, my beautiful, amazing wife, um, who I've had the honor and privilege of being married to for the last 17 years, um, before we got married, uh, she, she went through a, a really rough time and encountered a decent amount of darkness, um, to put it mildly. And she's one of the most heroic, courageous people I've, I've ever known. And it was in the midst of walking through some of this early on, I'd say. Um, I sat down at the piano, and this doesn't happen very often, but I sat down, I played five chords, and sang a song, and the whole song came out at once. And um, it just, it was something that I had to, uh, had to sing at that moment. And um, so this is a, this song is a, is a prayer for anybody who's been through any kind of trauma. Um, because it's that moment where you stand up in the midst of what, what feels like utter darkness and with a little bit of, of faith and defiance, you look at the darkness and you say, with all the strength you can muster, you didn't win. Well, 
Deaton, who do we have? Let's kick off 2020 January. 2020 started off with a bang with one of the most fun guys that I know. And his life has been a book. And it's a book and a life worth studying and reading and a person worth getting to know because when Reggie wrote Time of My Life, he had a deep repertoire of history to pull from to write a song such as that. He did that song, American Idol picked it up, David Cook sang it, and hopefully the rest was financial history for him. You Let's know, one check of him my, out. Oh, one of my favorite memories of Reggie Ham when he came was, he came a day before, do you remember when he came? We well, probably came more, but he came the day before and did a quick little run through. Yeah, with his daughter. And he brought his daughter. And that for me was one of those moments. One of the things I love about 19 Miles is you not only get to experience the, um, the moments that make up something behind the biggest hits that you've seen, but you also get to experience the real life and the character of the people who have written those songs. So, and sometimes we just see people on the night of the event, but Reggie's one of those that came in the day before and he brought his daughter who has special needs and one of the things I also noticed about him was the love that he had for his daughter. And it was true, and it was soft, and it was all-encompassing, and it was patient. You know, it's all of those things that we see. And I got to experience that the day before everybody else saw him on stage. Mm -hmm. And they'll never have that moment to see how he interacts with his family that we had that day he came. It's a precious story, and most people don't realize what he and his wife have done to nurture and be with this child and give it an amazing, amazing life when it was simply an orphan in China. And I hesitate to think what might happen if they had not intervened. Yeah. It's yeah. an amazing story so from an that. amazing guy. So I wrote this song and I uh, turned it in with my $10 entry fee. And 42,000 entries later, this song won the American Idol songwriting competition. Which, if this had, song hadn't won, this would be the weirdest story ever. You know what I mean? Like, and it came in 13th, and anyway, I'll do another song for you. So the song won the contest, and David Cook won that year. I don't know if you remember, but uh, great singer. And, uh, and so he, he sings the song on the finale, and then he puts the song out. They, they put the song out on iTunes, and it crashed the server. 236,000 downloads in four days. Only song to ever crash the iTunes server. They took it to radio, and it started climbing the charts, and I'm like, man, I think this is a hit. I was in Lowe's one morning at 7.30. I hear a guy humming it behind me. I'm like, yep, that's a hit. Stayed at number one for 16 weeks in a row, breaking the all-time record of a Nashville written pop song. It's me and Dolly Parton's I Will Always Love You. Thank you very much. Although I think, uh, I think Florida Georgia Line has broken our, our, our record since then, but I, I don't want to talk about that. I just want to talk about the good stuff. And then it started being used in all of these uh, television pieces, and it was like on the ESPYs and the NBA Finals, and it was like, so you think you can dance, use it as their finale, and then it was used in Dancing with the Stars, and it was used in all these places, and I was hearing it everywhere. <clears throat> and, it and then all of these people were sending me videos of like, um, 
uh, the, the graduations that were happening that year, and all the, and they still do. Every year, I get graduation photos uh, or, or videos sent to me, and uh, it was like, man, this is uh, becoming a thing, you know. And um, and then um, when my wife and I had been in China, we went to Beijing the first week before we adopted Isabella, my daughter, and we, we, four other families and us on a bus in Beijing decided we we realized that. That, that Beijing had gotten the, the, the Olympic bid for the 08 games. We bought these little kitschy hats from a street vendor that said 2008 Beijing Olympic Games. And we all sat on a bus and we made a pact. We're going to bring our kids back here for the 2008 games. We're going to reintroduce these girls to the land of their birth. And it's just going to be like an amazing thing. And we just got home and it all kind of went away. You know, it went away like dust. And um, we forgot about it, you know. But then all of a sudden, on the eighth day, the eighth month of the eighth year of the new millennium, they closed the opening ceremonies of the Beijing Olympic Games to this song. So we couldn't be there, but a half a billion people were hearing our story. And... and uh, couldn't believe it and I wrote a blog about it and it, and it went viral and it kind of uh, millions of people read it and <clears throat> I was getting emails from Singapore and Africa and all these places. It kind of launched me into the world of blogging. It's like another thing I can do to not make money from. And then a book publisher contacted me and said, man, we think this is a book, if you know, if you could write it. And so I wrote a few chapters and sent it to him and said, this is the backstory sort of. And they were like, man, we love it. And so I wrote this book and, and it came out in 2010 and it uh, became, and it got optioned uh, for, to become a film in 2011 and then it lapsed and it did it again. And then anyway, we're right on the cusp now of it actually going into production um, in 2020. So, Thank you. It's just been, I, it's just been a, a, a difficult process because they can't find anyone in Hollywood quite good looking enough to play me. So. Sorry, Hollywood. I did my part. I've been waiting for my dreams to turn into something I could believe in and Looking for that magic rainbow on the horizon I couldn't see it until I let go Gave in to love and watched all the bitterness burn Now I'm coming alive, body and soul And feeling my world start to turn And I'll taste every moment and live it out loud I know this is the time this is the time to be more than a name or face in the crowd I know this is the time this is the time of my life the time of my life holding on to things that vanished into the air left me in pieces but now i'm rising from the ashes finding my wings and all that i needed was there all along within my reach as close as the beat of my heart so i'll taste every moment and live it out loud i know this is the time this is the time to be more than a name or facing the crowd I know this is the time This is the time of my life The time of my life And I'm out on the edge of forever Ready to run I'm keeping my feet on the ground My arms open wide a face to the sun and I'll taste every moment and live it out loud I know this is the time 
This is the time to be more than a name or a face in the crowd. I know this is the time. This is the time of my life. Yeah. To be more than a name or a face in the crowd. I know this is the time. This is the time of my life The time of my life The time of my life Thank you guys for having me at 19 Miles for Music Row. I appreciate it. Thank you, Dan. Thank you very much. Reggie Ham, still one of my most favorite people that we've ever seen on the stage uh, and performing in a way that you'll have no other. With that, Cortland, who do we have next? Well, sometimes you, 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 you've heard a song before, but you don't know the story behind the song or the history that was compiled to form the song. So Johnny Bulford comes, and let, let's just say when Johnny came, he came in February, the month Aww. of love, he brought his wife. He was a lovebird mother. And they put on an amazing show. But the theme of love for the night carried on into Johnny's song that he shared with us. Because yeah. when Chris Young picked up this song and put it on his album, I don't even think Chris knew the, the story behind the song. That Flashlight was really the retelling of all the hours that Johnny had spent with his dad holding the flashlight, learning life lessons while fixing the Chevy. Yeah. Wow. And it was a great song and a great way to wrap up the evening. But if you just see this clip, you don't see everything else, which is why you need to be here for 19 miles. Yeah. But this is Johnny Bulford with Flashlight. I, I, I'm sure there's people here who get into arguments with me about this, but I've got the best dad, okay? And I was one of those kids, my dad could kick your dad's butt, all right? I was that kid, right? But, uh, no, I mean, he, he was, or he is my hero, and um, he, him and my mom had me super young, really young, and um, dad went straight to work, you know? Um, never complained or anything, just started hanging crown molding and baseboards and new construction in Central Florida. I'm from Orlando, Florida originally, and he worked out in the hot, hot sun. And then when I you know, was around 11, 12 years old, he brought me out into the hot, hot sun and, and reminded me every day to go to college, go to college, go to college. <laughs> At the end of the day, I'd be sweating, going, Ugh, and he'd go, you're going to college, right? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to college for sure. But. Um, He's the reason I got, uh, I got to chase my dreams, and uh, they never discouraged that. My parents didn't, and uh, he was just the best. So it's only fitting that my very first major cut was a song I wrote about my dad. Y'all want to hear about my dad some more? Yeah. This song was cut by Chris Young a uh, long time ago. Say, son, hold it still, keep that beam shining straight. He'd have a 916 in one hand working on that Chevrolet. And it seemed like every Saturday, as soon as the sun went down, we'd be huddled underneath that hood, tinkering around. And of all the great memories I had, Best ones are those nights, just me and my dad. And he'll never know how much he taught me out in that garage. And I guess the stuff that stuck is more about life than fixing cars. Cause to this day I still can't make them run right. But I sure did learn a lot. Holding the flashlight Well he told me a lot of stories 
about Grandpa and the war While he was trying to show me what a carburetor's for I learned a couple cuss words when he skinned his knuckles up And I found out Mama is the only girl he's ever really loved And when I asked him about women, he just laughed Said if we stayed out here all year We wouldn't have time enough for that And he'll never know how much he taught me Out in that garage And I guess the stuff that stuck Was more about life than fixing cars Cause to this day I still can't make them run right But I sure did learn a lot just holding the flashlight He'll never know how much he taught me Out in that garage And I guess the stuff that stuck Was more about life than fixing cars Cause to this day I still can't make them run right But I sure did learn a lot Just holding the flashlight Holding the flashlight Okay, so I'm so excited to be able to relive a little bit of our next Inside the Hits uh, artist. There are two times, this is one of them where we had to enact the the doors will open at six o'clock and y'all just gonna have to form a line before then. And I really do believe this next artist had probably the longest line formed outside into the rest of our building. Well, and actually out the front doors, too. Out the front doors, too. And, <laughs> and, it, and the line started forming early, and y'all just dying to know who this is, aren't you? Okay. Oh, well, let me, and let oh, me oh, say one oh. thing before you say who it is. Stay, stay a little bit longer. She was... Oh, it's a she. Oh. oh. She was completely <laughs> humble Oh. as well. You know her so much from different environments... Uh, that you forget that this is actually how she started, was this environment as a songwriter. And so I remember a lot of those first conversations was in that regard. Um, but anyway, it was a ton of fun to have her. And Deaton, you actually talked to her on the phone several times, yes? Yeah, I got to work with her many, many years ago. And uh, <laughs> unfortunately, I think she brought a singer with her because she'd had you know, a throat infection or something, you know, the, uh, the month that we were putting this together, but graciously showed up and, you know, blows us all away with yeah. her many talents and yeah. albums and albums of writing and movies she's written and musicals that she's written. So do y'all want to know who it is? Who would that be? <laughs> Let's watch Kathy Lee Gifford. Hi, everybody. God bless you all. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here with you tonight. 19 miles to Music Row. Only took me uh, 66 years to get here. <laughs> Delighted to be here. Um, a lot of people know me from my television career or my, uh, my entertainment career, but I've been an, uh, a singer and, uh, and a writer all my life. It just took a, a long time to make it the first thing that, that I thought about the first time when I, when I wake up in the morning. So I started writing with some amazing people. This is one of the, the a country song that I particularly enjoyed writing. It was with Jason Duke and Mark Irwin. And I discovered along the way that some of the greatest singers in this town, you don't know them, but they are well, you heard many of them earlier than I. This woman, this young woman, first time I hired her on, on, on many people's recommendation to do one of my demos, I went, why isn't she the biggest star in town? She is amazing. 
And one day, maybe she will be. I don't think she cares. She's a heck of a nurse. She's a wonderful, wonderful woman. She's an incredible artist. Will you please help me welcome Miss Katie O? Where is Miss Katie O? <laughs> Katie is extraordinary. And she, um, she does most, how I first heard it, she does most of um, Carrie Underwood's demos. So, okay, the woman can sing. What's she singing for us tonight, honey? I'm gonna sing one of your originals. I'm so excited. It's called Not Again, right? Not Again. Here she is, Katie O. Thank you. I'm gonna come sit on my little... Is it okay if I sit here? Yes, perfect. Actually, I have my own mic. Can she can hit the I highest can... notes just sitting down. She doesn't even breathe. <laughs> I'd hate her if I didn't love her so much. Here she is, KDO, not again. We've had so many good times. Why do good times always have to end? Stop counting all the days since we went our separate ways. Then you show up with your hey girl. Not again I never saw you coming Thought our love had come and gone Till I saw you there With that same smile and that same Why am I surprised You still got those better old minds But you know I never could say no to them back in, not again, you're telling me you're sorry, you're sorry, never been real enough for you, I'm counting all the days, since we went our separate ways, but I'm not the same girl I was back then. have had a fun time reminiscing about uh, some of our hit makers that we've had at 19 Miles. Uh, I was just commenting that um, I have loved every second that we have had with our Inside the Hits people. But what we want you to know is 19 Miles really would be nothing except for the amazing amateur songwriters that we invite uh, to our stage every month. And so we have had some amazing talent with that. And uh, it is truly one of the benchmarks that we started 19 Miles on, 
is to be able to provide a platform where if you're just getting started in songwriting or if you've not made it yet in songwriting, to where you can really uh, come to our stage and showcase your craft and showcase your skill in front of someone who's been here. That's why we have the inside hit makers that we've shown you tonight. And uh, it is just an honor and a privilege to be able to have uh, the very first hour that we do every 19 miles with a uh, look at um, where everything kind of gets started with songwriters who are just starting out. And there's an amazing amount coming uh, in the future of oh. songwriters and, and folks who are, like you said, just getting their start, but yeah. there's a lot of talent in the pool. But this is gonna continue because there, there, we have a, such a host and an array of amazing talent that is ready to step up and be part of any of the events we have. We're hoping that can start back soon and we can enjoy all of those moments together in a crowded room. Keep checking the 19 Miles uh, website. Uh, keep checking us on Facebook. If you're not already friends of us on Facebook, you can find us uh, at 19 Miles Music Row. We try to make it easy, at 19 Miles Music Row. Um, and so to kind of keep up with what's coming next. But year two, you don't want to miss not one second of uh, year two and the things that we have coming up. Thank you all for watching this tonight. We're very proud of this. And we're very, very proud of the team that helps us put this together every single month. Uh, to Dan, to Rusty, to Denny, and us three amigos up here. <laughs> it's been a great, great ride. And uh, there's other people behind the scenes that have absolutely made this possible. You have been a very important part of 19 Miles. If you're watching this show tonight and you're sitting there watching the stream, you've remembered some of the memories made by this artist or that artist or this songwriter or Karen selling you a pie or Carolyn saying hi when you walk in the door. That's right. But it takes all of us doing this and we'd love to give you the opportunity to help us continue to do this. There are expenses with 19 miles and so if you'd like to give you can go to the bottom of the screen right here. You can share with us how much you'd like to give and that type of thing and that does go right back in to make this possible so that this ministry does not cost the church anything and hasn't since its beginning and that you play a part in it just as well when you give to 19 miles. And last and possibly most, thank you, Pastor Brian, for loaning us your room. Right. We greatly appreciate it. Well, and if you know this, you know that the entire staff has in some way played a part in yes. this. Uh, yes, Pastor Brian, I think he took the, one of the biggest risks that he doesn't know he took exactly. <laughs> in doing this, but he's been here at every one. So thank you, Pastor Brian. Thank you, staff of Franklin First, and for all that you've done to be, help us create this event.